Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofinet, the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're uh, still in Rivia. We gave Willem, our son, Queen Meave's son, his final chance to surrender, but it feels like uh, we're uh, heading towards an inevitability. Uh, but before we do that, we still have a lot of uh, villages to clear out of monsters and Nilf Guardians alike. So let's start with this puzzle battle against some Arakasas, it seems. Ravenholm. The locals had a warning for the queen. We don't go to Ravenholm. That is cool. Okay, I'm gonna stop that there. That's a Half-Life reference. So a Half-Life 2 reference. One of the, well, probably the biggest horror level in Half-Life 2 is uh, Ravenholm. And they have the same adage, we don't go to Ravenholm. Because uh, in Half-Life it's infested with uh, head crabs, and Aragasses actually look a bit like head crabs. So uh, after Nilf Guardians had scorched the village, beasts claimed what remained. For a time, the venerable Grigory, mad with grief, resisted them, until they finally tore him to shreds, that is. Boost one unit to at least 125 power and use your leader's ability. Okay, let's see how we'll do that. So special rules, we just read about that. Damage all enemies by one and boost an ally by the amount of damage. And our ability is force an Arakas drone to consume adjacent vertical and horizontal units. If the power of any consumed units was odd, boost Arakas drone by its power. If it was even, damage Arakas drone by its power. So I'm guessing we should use... So we have, wait, in total, we have 9 on each, so that's 9, 18, 27, 36, times 2 is 72, 72 points in total, so we don't have enough yet. I'm just going to start with doing this, because otherwise I don't know where we'll end, so let's just do this. Let's start over here. I did read that completely. If the power of any with consumed units was old, boost Arakas drone by its power. If it was even, damage Arakas drone by its power. I have no idea what just happened. What happens if I do this? What the hell just happened? So everything is actually boosted because I don't know why. Oh, that way. Spawn an Arakas drone and boost all units on the battlefield by one. Oh. Oh, okay. So now we have some old units. So let's use the black blood. Like this. And boost an ally by that amount. Like this. Um, and then do this. Okay. Then we can do this, I suppose. Oh. For some reason, that damages first. Yeah, I'm gonna have to restart, I think. If it was even... Oh, I get damage when it's even. Never mind, I made a mistake. I thought it was the other way around. Uh, let's restart that. Wait, so 36. That's 18. On to 20. So if it's 20, it gets downplayed, right? So let's start with the black blood. That goes down 6. Okay. So now we have two unevens which are added and then plus four but what if we go with one over here first so he goes down which is fine because they all boost the other ones then we have um so we get boosted by one per Drone that is killed. So if we do this, we lose that middle one as well. But if we do this, we lose three of them. So we get boosted by three on each one. There we go. So now we have two even surrounding that 25 and one uneven. 
So if we do that again, we actually get boosted by two. And now I want to do three again. So let's go to the even ones over here. There we go. So now we have unevens. So 15 and 17 is 32 minus 16 is 16. So that brings us up to 46. So now 8 is surrounded by a very high amount of unevens. So let's just grab that. And there we go. Okay. We just needed to go over 125. I thought we, we were going to have to aim for 125. So just play them around a bit. I don't think it's actually hard. Just need to move around so you always take the uneven ones. When they appear on the board. So uh, Aracas is down. That was pretty straightforward. Will never die so long as we, are alive. we made it sound a bit more hard than it actually was. That's a lot of wood. Oh, letter found. Misfortune has befallen me. Those without mercy attacked me without cause. Woe to all for a final resting place is far. And we but wander blindly in the realm of chaos. Good mother, I pray your light never fades. Hear me and slay my enemies when I shout thy name. Oh. We have a, a bell in the background. Nilfgaard will not spit in our Mars. Okay. Lady, the traitors run before you. Find me a map and I'll show you where they buried the loot. Okay, another map. Great, thank you. So that's another treasure map at that. Rivians, know that this war is not merely about whose banners fly at court or to whom you will owe tax. No, it is a matter of life and death. Forced labor and mass graves, that is the fate that awaits you. I've witnessed with my own eyes how these dire circumstances have already unfolded in Edern. As I call upon you to take up arms and aid your queen in the fight against the Empire. Together, side by side, we shall force our enemy back across the Yoruga. There we go. So our uh, positive propaganda is uh, making its rounds as well. Just gonna take a look at the forest here. So she marked a place next to a Nilfgaardian banner, which is interesting. And she said from before, so I feel like that's going to be a place that is behind us, if I recall correctly. So we have three maps across a bridge between some trees next to a Nilfgaardian watchtower and next to a rock outside the city limits. But we have a question mark over here. Your Majesty, we found corpses in the tents, traveling merchants, it appears. It seems they were killed whilst they slept to drain the blood to the last drop. We've already buried the bodies, but don't know what you wish to do with their wares. Do you just requisition them, of course? There we go, we don't have any negative effects from that, so why not, eh? I'm just gonna go back down again for a second. Because we crossed one bridge before. I'm not sure if I checked that. Whether the, there was uh, any loot for the taking there. I think it might be here then. Yeah, there we go. So across the bridge, between the trees, and we get the animated Prince Willem card for in Gwen. I'm just going to quickly show the map. So it's right across from the bridge where we uh, met Willem actually. So it kind of makes sense. So moving further north. Uh, well, back north because we came from down there. And we fought those Aracasses, and the music kind of stopped, which is sad because the music is great in this chapter. <laughs> These lands, they look familiar to you? Naturally, Your Grace. They're the venerable Count Caldwell's. War, death, chaos. Everywhere but here. This land's positively pastoral. Okay, yeah, because it seems really, really quiet in here. Just a bit of loot strewn around, but otherwise, nothing much. So let's just get the recruits over here, 40 more men. Activate the fast travel points and we'll head into what must be Lord Caldwell's estate then. Engven and Elande and Palatin Caldwell, Hel Keter. You are entering the estate of Palatin Caldwell, long live the Emperor. Interesting, so look at those banners, Count Caldwell's estate. But those seem to be Northern Realm soldiers, so Rivian soldiers. The traitorous Caldwell family's residence loomed into view. Against the horizon, it looked suitably sinister. 
Yet the manor had changed since Neve last saw it. Two new wings, ornate towers, a grand colonnade. And the windows now glistened with stained glass, the gilded hue of imperial suns. We must pay them a visit, seethed the queen. The great double doors opened with an echoing thud. Just inside them stood the heir to the estate, Dragomir, his wife and three children by his side, and Helena, the treacherous Count's widow. Sliding the cap from his head, thus giving proof of the family's hereditary baldness, Dragomir knelt down upon one knee. Your Grace, my father's betrayal stands beyond doubt and exoneration, the young Caldwell said flawlessly and in a single breath as if he'd practiced a dozen times. And his death at your hands was most well deserved. I ask that you not punish sons for the sins of their fathers. I ask humbly, with bowed head, allow me to stay on my ancestral lands, to serve faithfully as your loyal subject. I believe not a word slithering out of his mouth, whispered Reynard. The first chance he gets to stab you in the back. He will take. Oh, God. What's with the decisions lately? Banish the Caldwell family. Give Dragomir leave to stay in Rivia. Of course, we don't know what... I mean, we can't know. But it would say with, with his father at his side. He looks exactly like him. And the picture is, of course, meant to uh, evoke our sympathy. Banish the Caldwell family or give Dragomir leave to stay in Rivia. He definitely got benefit from siding with the Nilfgaardians. Even his house looks like that now. While well, his father was mostly away. So I feel like he had a hand in the extra construction of the property. So uh, am I going to just banish the guy? I'm going to banish the guy, I think. I'm gonna I'm not gonna be influenced by that picture. It's it's annoying. Let's just banish the Caldwell family. Goodbye, buddy. Convenient to make this request now, don't you think? Why not earlier? Meve asked, crossing her arms and raising her chin. It would have behooved you to send a messenger once I'd crossed into Rivia. Uh, preferred to speak to you directly, Your Grace. For For you held out hope. Hope that the Black Clads would yet defeat me. You stood on their side till the last. No. The Coldwells I trusted once, but I shan't make that error again. You've one day to pack your chattels and go. Leave my country. Dragomir rose from his knee and shook out the cap he'd crushed in supplication. Only ever as a corpse, your majesty. He hissed, his vulnerable demeanor gone in a flash. Yes, You'll not take okay. me for your vassal. You must take me as your foe. Men, to arms! At this sign, armed men rushed from the house while archers appeared atop the roof. Clearly, Dragomir had expected to be refused. Okay, there we go. Made the correct decision there, I feel like. And let's crush this mama. Well, daddy's boy. The Caldwell legacy. The old adage, the apple does not fall far from the tree, proved true once again. Dragomir was as loyal as his father. He did, however, differ in one respect. He demonstrated competence in battle, presenting greater resistance than Meave had anticipated. Overpower your opponent within five turns. I'm gonna do just that, you mother. You'll not destroy my family. I won't allow it. His voice actually is familiar for some reason. So he boosts his units like that, apparently. Holy crap. Trigger all allies' loyal abilities twice. Caldwell's Adherent. Damage unit by the number of cards on this row and damage so it's the same. And the family pride every turn on turn start. Reduce this card's timer by one if Meave is winning. When the timer reaches zero, Meave wins the battle. Okay. So, first things first. The Aratusa Adept. Let's play her. And duplicate our Rivian Onagers. Like this. And then end the turn. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. <laughs> How often can the Sightman actually do that? Cool down on four, okay. So let's place one Rivian Ology there. And we can start whacking on the Lyrian Arblast. And end the turn. I'm purposefully this not using Meave's ability just yet. Black 
Uh, now, reinforcements. On the Rivian Onager. That gives us a bunch more. And that makes four. Which means we can kill the Lyrian Arblast. Uh, I'm just going to keep it at that for now. I can target the Aratusa at that, so that's fine. So let's end the turn. And then we'll use the War Tell Wagon. Me Neve's ability. And... Boo! Okay. Gonna have to be careful now, because... Play a random ally from the graveyard, okay? So let's use the War Wagon. Can you like a and then use Meave's ability. To replay the war wagon and then the dee 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 dee. so war wagon and a rivian sapper so that's gonna come in really handy so war wagon over here you can try to win them all. then the rivian you sapper won't. and start whacking those light infantry units as we usually do but this is gonna be our fastest way to overpower caldwell's forces so that's all of that and then we hit the lane arbalast for four more and kill off everything over there. We have a lot of charges. So that's one of those lay incitement. Let's focus on the lower level ones. There goes another one. Then the armor on this guy. And they're all a multiple of three, which is great. So we don't waste any damage potential. And then this one is also a multiple of three. So just keep whacking those sidemen in the face. And uh, we'll just not kill that last one, I think. Or maybe, yeah, we're just gonna have enough. There we go. All sidemen down. And the third. What do you want of me? My spirit's willing and I'll work Double dose, and his uh, countdown is going down. Let's put another Rivian Onager down. Damaging the lay sidemen a bit further. And the turn. We're still above him, which is great. Ooh, that was close. That was close. Um, the disgraced warrior. Come on, kill me! And the turn. We're still ab ahead, points wise, so it's going down. Give me a Ooh, and that's gonna kill the onager. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but that does kill an onager. There we go. Disgraced warrior is going down. Boosting that one disgraced warrior as well, which allows us to kill one of the field medics. And now we have 12 more charges, so might as well kill off some arbalests. Which I think we're gonna have enough charges to kill the arbalests. Yeah, we will. And the kablamo, the plunk, and every other sound effect you want to make with that. There goes another Arblast. We don't really care at this point. Let's give the Lillian Blacksmith a go. And replay the Devana Woundstone on the Disgraced Warrior. Oh, there we go. More charges on the Rivian Onagers. And five is enough to kill that one. And then, sadly, just not enough to kill the Sidemen. That's going to be up for next turn then. But well, we're kind of decimating Father his troops. Was right about you. Goodbye. So uh, five turns ahead and uh, we won. So overpower him for five turns and we've done that. So the Shrike card. Dragomir lay in the courtyard of his extravagant manor. With the last of his strength, he clawed at the colored gravel. He resembled an insect that was hurt, damaged, yet pulled itself along as if it could somehow escape death. The queen knelt beside him and gazed into his clouded eyes. I want you to know your family will be looked after. You've relatives in Kedwin. They'll be sent there, properly escorted, with the proper stipend. Dragomir wished to say something, but choked on his own blood. He was dead a moment later. The queen slowly stood and gave the order to march. She rode at the front of the column, deep in thought. There we go. And that's uh, Caldwell Jr. down. Let's just gather what's left of his uh, men here. Lots of stuff, actually. And a lot of gold, most, mostly. Jesus Christ, I don't know what to do with all of that. And there's a chest in the back. 
Obviously. So let's open that up. And we get another avatar border. Which I will accept with grace. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's basically the Caldwell Estate. So let's head back outside. I see I missed one more heap of scraps. And that's another thousand coins. So we're going over 40k. Which is nice. Which is really nice. We did get a letter as well. Apparently a report. Dragomir, my health is well. Thank you for asking. I have other troubles too. I have it from a good source. Meave has left Mahakam with dwarven recruits supplementing her ranks. I suspect she might mean to pay me a visit. As absurd as it sounds, in light of recent events, I have begun to entertain the possibility that vile wench might actually succeed in liberating Lyria and Rivia. As they say, fools have all the luck. In that case, do not count on mercy. I know her well and trust me, never has a more vengeful, malicious woman walked this world. As soon as you hear she's crossed the border, put your men on high alert, kiss your wife and children. I hope we shall see each other soon. Caldwell. So, either way, he was gonna attack us, probably. Since uh, his father warned him way before we even got here. That we might be victorious. So, there's another little village over here. And there's a werewolf here. Well, that is interesting. It's a standard battle, though, and that's a bit long for what we have left. There's a lot of standard battles here. So, I'm gonna first go north to see what that question mark is. So, we can kind of end the episode on that instead of... Ooh. That might also be a standard battle, but yeah, we'll see. Meave now reached Willowhain, a settlement she knew well. For it lay near Waldenrad where in peacetime she would go to escape her queenly duties and enjoy the thrill of a hunt. Pheasant, grouse, and partridge in abundance. You will see, said Meave in muted excitement, pivoting in her saddle to face Gascon. Alas, it appeared the war had ravaged even these woods. Where life had stirred and grown tall before, only resinous trunks remained. And the village itself had lost its quaint allure, Surrounded now by a double stockade, a golden sun fluttering above it. Bastards couldn't even let the damn trees be. Gascon seethed. A dismal scene. Her once cherished wood, and it weighed heavily on the Queen's spirits. Waldenrad had been a place removed, where she could rest and forget the weight of her crown. Reynard's voice roused me from her sad reverie. Enough guardian garrison holds the village, he said. We ought to drive them out. Avoid any surprise later from the rear. Indeed. Order the attack. Give the order to attack, but none is to play the hero. We shall breach or topple the stockade together. Senseless to perish so close to home. Reynard nodded. Moments later, the Lyrians rushed forth and attacked. Here we go. A new home. The Battle of Willowhain. Neve recalled her first hunt in Waldenrod nearly 20 years ago. She was young, naive and newly married to Reginald. Now the forest had been raised. Reginald was dead and Neve shared little in common with the starry-eyed girl who first arrived at the Lydian court. So it's a shortened battle, so this shouldn't take too long. And I'll see you guys uh, in a second. The time has come to purge these devils from our home! There we go. That is nice. So we have a visiting ambassador. Strength all allies by one. And black infantry arbalest who can do two damage each. So let's start off with the Grey Rider. We have Gascon in our hands. So might as well take advantage of that in a... You know what? Yeah, yeah. First the Grey Rider. Yes. We'll play Blood afterwards. So we kind of know what all of these do. For every two units destroyed through self by six and damage all enemies by two. And that's the annoying order card, so we're gonna have to be careful with that as well. So, blood. Uh, let's do the war wagon and the blacksmith, so we double play blood as well. So, first, the war wagon. Kind of metals. Hungry like a wolf. That hell. moves that guy around. So they're all gonna be getting Necessity. benefits from anything we do. <laughs> so there we go, blood again. And we play the onager and I think, you know what? The war wagon and the, no, wait, the other way around. The onager and the war wagon. 
Because this way we can place the onager first on the bottom row and leave the Wagenberg to the top row, which has more place for new units. Like this. There we go. And then we can use Meave to... I know it's an order ability, but we can use Meave to pull back the war wagon. We have... Do we have a sapper in our hand? I don't think we have, right? Because there's one, two... Can I hide the cards? Yes, we can. No, no sapper in my hand. So might as well just go for another war wagon and then the sapper. I know I only have one onager to take advantage of it, but... There we have it. Uh, war wagon. You can try to win them all. That's nine. And then the sapper. Pissing in the mort. Oh, dead. Like this. And after killing all those light infantry units, we have the space again to make some more leeway. I think I'm going to focus on the Alba Armored Cavalry first. And there uh, we killed pretty much everything. That does, however, give that guy a lot of charges, or not. Every two units destroyed by itself by six and damage all enemy units by two. Okay. I'm gonna have to be careful because those order abilities are gonna stack. Let's go, go with Disgraced Warrior and Raynard. Like this, so Disgraced Warrior over here. And then Raynard over here. Discipline shall bring us victory. Which gives us more charges. But I feel like we're gonna even lose this. Um, like this. A kill of those. Yeah, I don't see how we're gonna get across that point potential. Uh, we'll see. The evil at us. That is going to be annoying. Um, an extra charge won't be that bad, but first, Devana Runestone on the Disgraced Warrior. That's going to boost the armor again, which gives us. I'm not going to even do that. I lose more points than I gain. I lose more points than I gain, so let's just end the turn. Mm, a highly curious case. Then I think so. We, he gains six points when I use something. So might as well Girls use this. That boosts the armor even further. So with Arnulf, we now do seven damage. So seven damage, I can do that twice. So we gain one point. No, because we don't. I could do it over here. So seven. So he starts at 208, so he needs to end at 207 then. Yeah. And then with the 16, we can actually do that on this row, because we'll get more out of it since those other two are just too overpowered at the moment. Although we kill both of these, but that's not going to help him much, so I'm just going to go for points. We're not going to make this. We're not going to make this. So end the turn. Gascon has a lot of points, but this is going to be really close. Oh, that is... That is... Yeah. I think we lost, right? Quick and painful, this yeah. will be. We lost. We completely and utterly lost. Because even if I... Yeah, every time I try to damage something, I'm going to get it in my face again. So let's restart. <laughs> See you at the end of that, because that was annoying. So, with a bunch of war wagon plays, I we're we ending at this, this kind of. Way. I think we can finish this off with Isbel and end this one once and for all. But this was one hell of a fight. Damn. We went up to 89 damage, which is going to be a little bit more. So, there we go. Two more. Because that counts. Damage on armor counts. So, let's just use Isbel Destroyer first. And that kills... All but ooh, that's not good. Ooh, okay, so and now we have egg as a finisher. The unworthy shall be. And I'm not gonna touch any. I'm not gonna do any order abilities anymore. I'm just gonna keep this as it. Is. Although, let's just kill this thing because really don't want to have that in my way. So let's just pause now. 
And that should be it, I think. Mm. There we go. Another Vico like Vardo Novice. Uh, Novice? Medic. There we go. Wow, that took me a long time for some reason. Those armored cavalry dudes are ridiculous. When the battle dust had settled, Neve instructed her soldiers to gather Willowhane's inhabitants. Upon spotting their armed liberators, the common folk cowered in terror. No longer need you fear, the queen shouted. No longer must you worry about homes and loved ones. The war's nearly done. Of a sudden, a villager dropped to his knees and raised his hands to the heavens in supplication. Drache! Guide my queen! Meave broke off oddly, baffled by the man's outburst. And then it dawned on her. The Rivians of Willowhane had been driven away. Taking their place, Nilfgaardian settlers brought in to transform the near subsistence plots of local peasants into great estates producing for the Empire. Reynard managed to grasp the essence of the Nilfgaardian peasants' frantic pleas. They wish to stay. They've come to love the land. They pledge to renounce their Emperor, swear allegiance to you as their rightful ruler. They. Meave had stopped listening. She turned to survey the hamlet. The walls of the huts freshly whitewashed, tools neatly arranged, flower beds well tended. A young girl of six or seven summers peered out from her hiding place in a sunflower patch. Your Majesty? Asked Reynard, having noted that Meave's mind had wandered. What are your orders? What shall we do? That is an annoying one. So this matches what happens in the books every time Nilfgaard's Conquers the lands, they drive away the original settlers and bring in Nilfgaardian settlers to, well, transform the lands to produce stuff for them. But of course, we can't forget that these uh, villages were, of course, property of our people, of Rivian people. So, letting them stay, even though we're again being tempted with a young girl of six or seven that we're gonna just move out of the way that would be a bad thing but i mean this is rivian land and they just drove off the original owners of these houses so no drive the of guardians off tell them actually no i shall tell them myself meave stood on a bench drew then brandished her sword and yelled at the top of her lungs out go be gone this is our land our country. Understand? Without understanding a single word, the settlers easily deciphered the Queen's sentiment. And our soldiers? They hastily gathered their chattels and fled. Agree. Meave sheathed her sword and resumed the march. And Willowhane, once vibrant, now stood quiet and lifeless, save for the wind howling through it. Of course, it's the, if the Rivians are dead, there's nobody to... Mom, get back. I've come to tell you I must leave your army. Ah, oh, crap. What? Why? Against my better judgment, I joined you to heal your wounded. I realize now that was a mistake. Okay. Fair enough. What exactly do you mean? What you did runs counter to all my beliefs. You had your reasons, and have them still, I know. Yet I've no desire to abet them. I'd feel shame to lend a hand. What can I do? Is there anything that would make you stay? No, ma'am. Farewell. Okay. That is a consequence of us choosing our own people. Bye, Isabel. Damn, okay. So be it. Good luck and Godspeed, Isabel. And that's that. Damn, that was sudden. All of a sudden. Uh, Isabel is out. So, and with that somber note, I'm going to have to take a little break. Because I've been going on for far too long. Just going to read this. I read your letter with tears in my eyes. Never did I expect to see this day, my little Ilian, son of a, to a freedman and peasant woman, now a landowner. Land and home to your name. Your plans sound ambitious, but I believe you are in control of your destiny. I've no doubt you'll, gil, you'll give Effie and Gwilly a sh childhood full of joy and free of want, the sort we were unable to provide for you. We shall pray for your happiness and prosperity with every passing day. I wish your, you health and eagerly await your next letter. That is sad, of course, because we've uh, driven those people off, but 
still feel like that it was mostly the right decision. Because of course, the Rivians that were once here were driven off. So yeah, nothing we can do about that. So with that, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And uh, I'll see you in the next one of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. Goodbye. Okay,